what do you think only cost $2,000 in this movie? I'm going to say it was Laura Dern's just like day pay because she, she, <laughs> she just did it in one day. Oh my God, her per diem? Wow, good for her. I'm going to say it was the nose whistle. That's such a stupid name. No, 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 no. Call for help. William H. Macy's mustache. Uh, yes. The William, upkeep for that. The, the mustache grease. Wait, the gun, <laughs> the sound, gun effect. sound effect budget. <laughs> and I'm going to also add the water slap sound oh, effects Oh, yeah, the to water slap bullshit. sound effects were really bad oh, in the movie. Goodness. It was weird. <laughs> well, I don't know what Ryan's guess is. Ryan, what yeah, do you what, think? Yeah, Ryan, what do you think it was? I'm going to yeah. guess the, the Nokia ringtone. <laughs> The correct answer was the rights for Barney. No. Oh, oh we should have known. I mean, that's actually pretty cheap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they said that they were very like excited to be a part of it. Yeah. That's really all what the Raptors were trying to just say. It was just they were just gonna try to come up to everybody just singing, I love you. <laughs> you love me. We're a happy family. Making stuff is hard, especially in the entertainment world, when there are millions of dollars on the line. We're gonna talk about these disastrous, never-ending, and sometimes downright dangerous productions. This is The Shit Show. Hello everyone, hello friends. Uh, We're live with Reddit of all places. This is so <laughs> um, exciting. Thanks so much uh, for l- l- like Reddit for having us. This is incredible. Um, and thank you to Ryan who set this all up. Like uh, seriously, this is incredible. Yes, Ryan's the best. Um, th- uh, thank you for me to everybody to just like let me be a part of this. Like, <laughs> Ryan, thank you for inviting the podcast. Ian and Jenny Ray, thank you for make- letting me be a part of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, well, we're Clint. auditioning for others, <laughs> so right. maybe maybe we'll have one in here uh, right now. Um, we'll have a c- contender for Clint's replacement. <laughs> yeah, if you don't uh, if you don't know who uh, we are, we are. It was a shit show, a series that focuses on uh, troubled productions in pop culture. Uh, we've mainly done movies, we've done a couple of TV shows, and we've uh, dabbled into some video games. Um, this could mean fired actors, belligerent directors, injured stuntmen, lots of shooting without scripts, and everything beyond. Um, for the truly epic shit shows, we make mini documentaries for YouTube, and uh, that you may have seen some of those. They're like, uh, I just recently, the big one that blew up was... Um, Uh, rebooting Batman, which led to Batman Begins, uh, Back to the Future, uh, The Fast Saga, um, Casino Royale. Um, And then for the productions that need like a, that aren't as big of a story or just need a good ribbing, a good uh, (laughs) making fun of, um, we have a companion conversational podcast, which you're all about to witness or uh, listen to. Uh, but first, my name is uh, Ian, and I am joined by Clint. Hello. Was, was that an Ian Malcolm joke? Yes, that was. Oh, that okay. Okay. I, I kind of well came done. off a little Obama, but uh, <laughs> is that why you're wearing your like a black T-shirt yeah, with, uh, it's with, your, for with me. your glasses? I love it. Yeah. yeah, you do have you do have a, a Jeff Goldblum vibe. Oh, thank about you. you right now. Uh, but yes, joined by Clint. Hello, and Ray. Hey. I am not one for idle chit chat on podcasts. Uh, maybe some of you all agree with me. Um, so we're just going to jump right into today's film, Jurassic Park Three. Oh boy! Uh, this movie had so many issues with it, and enough to be its own video. However, the reason we're doing a podcast is that so many I, I found so many great quotes about the making of it, <laughs> but none of them were on film. None of them were recorded. Oh. Um, a lot of them were like for dvdfile.com and That's David's Jurassic website. Park blog.com, what, I, whatever. It's like Dot really. Net. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, <laughs> the, the beginning of really uh, early internet stuff. Right. The weird quotes we found on .gov. That was, <laughs> yeah. that was yeah, yeah, really those were That was the conspiracy theory rabbit hole <laughs> we went down. Are, yeah. yeah, is this actually working? Are they actually uh, <laughs> dinosaurs in the world? 
Um, and uh, so none of it was on film. So, but uh, I think that there there's just so many good quotes in this that uh, we'll just do a podcast of it. So to start us off, uh, Clint, mm. you, Mister Huge Jurassic Park fan, yes, you've never seen Jurassic Park three before, not until about four days ago. Oh my, that <laughs> blows my mind. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I'd seen it, and then we started watching it, and the scene in the plane happened. We both know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, what scene we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, and I was like, my "Favorite scene? Oh, I have seen this. Yeah, <laughs> actually, I have seen this." How how did you not see it? Like, did you were like mad or like oh, I'm not gonna go see that? Well, I remember when I saw the first Jurassic Park when I was a kid. I was eight years old, and I just it just blew my mind. I was like, "This is the best thing I've ever seen in my life." It's probably like in my top five. Yeah, uh, it's one of those movies that if it's on TV. You know, like, remember when TV was just kind of like, you know, a thing instead of like streaming? <laughs> just, but, a, just a thing. Like it was on like TBS or something like that, you know, or TNT. And if it was on, no matter where it was in the, sh- like, like it could have been the beginning, could have been the end, yeah. you know, I just had to stop and sit down and watch it. And then Lost World Jurassic Park 2 came out and it had its moments. It was like, okay. Uh, and I remember just thinking to myself, sequels, even as a kid, I was like, sequels are just never as good as the original. And I just, it just, I it just flew under the radar for me. I have no idea how I was not able to Never see went, it. Never went to see it. No, I, I saw it on my birthday, um, because it came out like the weekend before, and I remember that was like kind of uh, like looking back on it now, I'm like, oh, that's when I was really stingy about uh, <laughs> movies then, because I remember seeing in the credits. Oh, it wasn't John Williams. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> like that kind of snooty nonsense. Even back but, then, you were a John Williams snob? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. a general snob in general. <laughs> um, and uh, so, like, I have I remember seeing it then, but kind of like, this, is, this, is, this wasn't great. And I haven't revisited it since we watched it, like, five days ago. Yeah. Okay, so let's get started. Let's get in there. Um, I, did, I did bring oh. my original... Jurassic what are you wearing? Park hat that I got at Universal Studios forever ago oh. as a kid. On and, the on the boat ride one. Yeah. So this is like this is like it's all stained in yellow from like you know having it Ew, for the last twenty years. From a head years. sweat. Yeah. Gross. Yeah. Teenage teenager sweat and my Jurassic Park shirt that my mother bought me. Aww. So I'm all I'm all Jurassic Parked out. I'm really glad you're not showing us your Jurassic Park underwear. Thank it you. It didn't Again. come in time. I actually did order some from <laughs> Meundies. More like Geriatric Park. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, actually, I was I was I was crossing my fingers that my Jurassic Park underwear was going to arrive by today, but it didn't. Uh, so. so sad. Yeah. These lovely people get to miss out on that shoot. Yeah, n- uh, no, thank you. Uh, they don't have to see it. They're fine. <laughs> okay, let's let's get into the history. Here we go. What what led to Jurassic Park three? Based on the uh, 1990 novel by Michael Crichton, the first Jurassic Park opened on Ju- June 11th, 1993. It made three hundred and fifty-seven million in the U.S. and nine hundred and seventy-eight million worldwide. Put that in today's dollars; that's about just shy of two billion. Jeez. So then, Damn. just and that's just Jurassic Park, just the original. Okay. Um, and then they did like the, the 3D re-release in 2013, which pushed it over a billion. But pretty crazy. That doesn't seem very fair. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> um, on a budget of guesses and uh, and and i'll give you i'll give you a, a fair um uh comparison another show that we just we covered super mario brothers released that same year like two weeks mm-hmm. before was 48 million dollars what do you think the budget of jurassic park the the big <sighs> huge movie that it was well, number they... one film of all time at that point they had significantly better dinosaur effects. I'll tell you that. On I don't know. Cars, those Goombas, so. man. They were the shit. Yeah. Uh, so wait, what did you say Mario Brothers was? $48 million. All right. I'm going to say that Jurassic Park did more with maybe like comparative standards less. And I'm going to say like $55 million. Ooh. I'm going to say $200 million. Tame. Okay. No, you were right on, what? Clint. Oh, S- almost, what? almost. Look, sixty-three million. 63 but you were right on your okay. your assumption there. That's yeah. not nearly Which is, enough money. Right. That's kind of crazy how much <laughs> it did not cost. <laughs> yeah. Um, it became the highest grossing film of all time, replacing Poltergeist. No. No. <laughs> no. 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 E.T. E.T. That's another right. The other Spielberg. The so other I, Spielberg. I, I just listened Polter to our Poltergeist Geist. episode, so I was like waiting for that, <laughs> yeah. and I still like I remember that. I still screwed it up. Um. <laughs> 
So on Rotten Tomatoes, it's a 92% with critics and 91% audience. And I think we can all agree here that the first Jurassic Park is a stone cold classic. Oh, it's a masterpiece. Masterpiece. Yeah. Okay. I know. What, what, what that 8% is? Is it like. <laughs> Mm. Just, Dinosaurs real? No, thank you. Just yeah. really, yeah. That kid really should have died people. in the electrocution. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it was. Uh, we'll talk about people, fans of the book, uh, in here in a second. Maybe they were just like, "Ooh, it wasn't the book." You I don't know. know. They were review bombing Jurassic Park back, <laughs> back in the nineties. <laughs> the I didn't think that existed in the nineties. Um, okay, so after seeing it, director Joe Johnston, as he says, he he liked it. He liked Jurassic Park. He liked it. That was it? Uh, yes. <laughs> well, it, like as, his direct quote was like, I liked it. As we discussed, because I watched some video of Joe Johnston to try to get the voice down for reading quotes later. He's a very sleepy man. <laughs> he just sounds sleepy. Yes. And so I'm not surprised that he was like, it was fine. It was, yeah, it was good. It's it was fine. fine. So he approaches Steven Spielberg and and offers to direct the sequel. Um, Spielberg obviously made the sequel. Uh, thanks to the success of the first film, uh, Spielberg actually asked Crichton, Michael Crichton, to write a second novel just so he could make a sequel film. <laughs> which, really? which if you if you're fans of the okay. books, like you'll know that like they share very little in common. Yeah. It's like basic concepts, and some of the characters and some of the characters aren't even remotely the same thing. But it's huh. like the m- first movie was kind of like roughly adapting it. Like right. John Hammond is like an ego maniac, like maniacal crazy person instead in of just book. like a sweet old grandpa yeah exactly yeah. and he dies uh and so does ian malcolm oh kind in, of in the book in the book oh, oh wow. whoa so, so book like spoiler alerts Jeez. yeah <laughs> and so like it's <laughs> yeah, like totally it's different 20, but then he's like 30 year old movie. Year old book. <laughs> so so like spielberg's like hey make a sequel to the novel but like it's totally different from the movie i made but whatever it Spielberg, I guess, has that kind of power. Spielberg was like, I feel like this has a better shot of winning best adapted screenplay than best screenplay. Yeah. So if we need, but we need to adapt it from something yeah. first. So yeah, yeah. Therefore, write a book. He probably had it all written down. Not like, original. He probably gave Crichton the manuscript, like you know, of the movie, and be like here, just just take this and do your yeah, thing. do your thing, and then we'll 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 do our thing. Yeah. Right. Um. So while he was making uh, Lost World, while he was preparing it, he had the idea of uh, the T Rex rampaging a city. But he wanted to hold that off until a third film because he was like, this is my franchise. Like, this is my big thing that I'm going to do. Um, but while he was doing Lost World, he realized he never wanted to make another one of these movies. <laughs> and so he put that at the end of Lost World because he was like, I'm going to be done making Jurassic Parks after this. Right. <laughs> so the Lost World Jurassic Park opened May 23rd, 1997, five years later, making $229 million domestic. 618 total worldwide. So it's about two thirds of the first mm-hmm. and on a budget of 74 million. So slightly more expensive and not as a big of a hit. Mm. Um, Still somehow doesn't feel like enough money for that. <laughs> yeah. to, to for how much money. shit that goes down in that movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Um, and on Rotten Tomatoes, it's uh, 53% with critics and 51% with audience. So Audience, you guys here at Reddit. Okay, I want everybody to go to our YouTube channel. So youtube.com slash it was a shit show. And then check take out the eye and shit. Um, go to our community tab. And I want you all to vote on whether or not you think Lost World Jurassic Park is underrated. Because God damn it, I think it is. That movie is great. <laughs> <laughs> I love Lost oh, World. I think it is like a great sequel. We're doing a was it worth it for Lost World? Well, I just think not, not worth it, but just is it is, is it, it un- is it is it unfairly fifty three percent with critics? Right. Is I find it overrated, in- underrated, or just rated? I find it interesting that the, the, the critic score and the and the and the viewer score are like neck Dead. and neck. Yeah, because you Again. Ra- you rarely see that. Now, it's either yeah. yeah, it's either the critics love it and audiences yeah. hate it, or it's or it's opposite. So yeah, that's interesting that Lost World is like right on the money with fifty fifty at fifty percent. Yeah. So, um, I personally love it. I think it is completely maligned for no reason sure there is a dr- uh, gymnastic kick in it yeah but... that's the one thing i was gonna say like that was a little bit of, that, was, that, was, that was some bullshit that's, right there it's fine <laughs> but i think that movie is crazy intense and spielberg is just such a masterful director like there's so many great sequences in that that i think it's fantastic it reminds when you me you rewatched it you yeah. rewatched it just recently mm-hmm. how do you feel 
Um, yeah, I I like The Lost World. I was telling you that it's it reminds me a lot of the difference between Alien and Aliens, yes. right? Like Alien is a really tense, suspenseful kind of monster in the house movie where you're just kind of dealing with this this one sinister alien and it's like really scary. And um, and then Aliens is just sort of like a big dumb like action movie where it's just like all the aliens, more dinosaurs, whatever. And so yeah, The yeah. Lost World to me feels like Aliens, where it's like bigger in scope. You're adding more dinosaurs. You got you mentioned got there's all a bunch of guys with guns. There's a ton of red shirts in that movie. Yeah, that you a lot get of to people to die. Die, which is which is my biggest great. gripe about Jurassic Park three. I I completely agree, but we'll get there. Not enough red shirts. <laughs> Not um, enough red shirts. Yeah, but the, like that scene where they're all walking through the tall grass and the raptor tails oh, are like so coming good. through yeah, that to is, hunt that them. That is pretty rad. It's rad. Um, okay, I think that's great. We'll we will we we will revisit the poll uh, later on. Okay, so after seeing this movie, dr- director Joe Johnston again asked about making a Jurassic Park film, and Spielberg at this point is like. I'm going to make AI your favorite movie, Clint. Uh, <laughs> make it AI instead. And he gives Joe Johnston Jurassic Park 3. Okay. Now, here we got my first couple of quotes from Joe, uh, Joe Johnston here. Again, uh, going back to what you were saying, Jenny Wright, he is a very, he's very dry, man. And he is vi- like, he has a very dry sense of humor and he is uh, very candid. Like, he will just speak his mind. He does not hold anything back. So it's very, like, all these quotes are so good because he just doesn't all give right. a shit. Right. <laughs> like, and so, so many of the interviews leading up to the release of Jurassic Park 3, he was very open about how really hard this movie was to make. Um, okay, so this is what he was saying about being hired to do Jurassic Park 3. <laughs> So Joe says, if the second Jurassic Park movie had been an improvement on the first, I probably wouldn't be here. (laughs) Oh, my. (laughs) Damn. Wow. I mean, he's he's right. <laughs> right? Because like, Spielberg would have been like, well, hang on a minute. I'm going to yeah. direct that third movie. I'm not yeah. going to give it to some some Joe Johnston type. <laughs> yeah. And this is <laughs> some Joe Johnston. Joe Johnston Schmo type. I was, Joe Schmo. I was going to, I was trying to come up with a more generic name, but that's the most <laughs> generic name there is. So. Yeah. And this is what he said about uh, Lost World. All right. I think that if the second film had been done by anyone other than Steven Spielberg, it would have been much more well received. I think Steven has a pressure on him that no one else in the business has. There is so much expected of him and so much that he has to live up to, all self-inflicted, of course. Pretty yeah, accurate, right? That's, yeah. That's fair. Yeah. I actually was, I didn't know that the second one, I, I assumed that both sequels were just directed by someone else. Joe Johnston's. <laughs> Joe Johnston oh, types. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, Joe Schmoe's Johnston. I did, I did Johnston's. not know that it was him. <laughs> no, yeah, that's... Uh, and and you have to under, remember, like ninety three, you did Jurassic Park, and um, uh, Schindler's List yeah. in the same year. So he was coming off probably with the greatest one two punch ever. Right? Yeah, we thought eighty two was the summer of Spielberg. It was yeah, ninety three. <laughs> yeah. So um, okay, who is Joe Johnston? So he got his start as a visual effects designer on the original Star Wars. He was hired under Industrial Light and Magic. Now, if you know anything about those stories, it's just a bunch of hippies who were just making it up as they went along. Yeah, um, yeah and... improvisational light and magic, <laughs> yeah. as we called yes. it once before. Um, I really want and... that improv team name. <laughs> I love that. So he is also the co-creator of who? Come on. Come on. Star Wars. A nine numb. I don't uh, know. Boba Fett. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he he did like the final designs on Boba Fett. Wait, for the original Star Wars? In Empire Strikes Back. Oh, okay. And okay. Uh, for actually the holiday special. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, there was wait, a... that's, that's a whole other thing. We'll okay. go into that later on. But he was also the production designer on the Ewok Adventures <laughs> TV Ooh, movies. Yeah. Oh. Shout out to Nicole. Um and then he was the <laughs> art director on Raiders of the Lost Ark and Temple of Doom. This go. is where he meets Spielberg. Gotcha. Ah, okay. um, he even did work on Howard the Duck. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes. uh, you know, good or bad. <laughs> oh boy, watched um, that recently for the first time. We'll do. Yeah. We'll do. We'll talk about it. We'll yeah. do another episode on it. Uh, but he hated this. He hated doing that for some odd reason. He does not enjoy this work. He was oh, so, uh, as a visual effects yeah, artist. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. He was and, responsible for like. 
like uh, the the flaming heart and everything like that and Temple of Doom, like when his chest closes up. And all <laughs> I that. don't know. I mean, what, what particular sure. things, but yes. <laughs> but you you would think that like someone who got to do some of the, some of those effects, they're just burned into your brain. Like one mm-hmm. of the big things that he did for Raiders was the the end sequence. The, yeah, like the face melting. The face melting. Literal, and stuff like that. literal, like face melting, like metal. Like, man, 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 Yeah, and it wasn't metal enough for him. Um, <laughs> uh, the, but, I liked it. Yeah, it was fine. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so he tells George Lucas that he's going to quit. Lucas says, hey, I'll pay for you to go to film school and keep you employed here Damn. for like part time. And so he goes to USC for a year. Hates that. Oh, my God. Um, as right. he likes to say, they asked him not to come back. US, but I think USC asked him not to come back. <laughs> yeah, like that's, <laughs> that's he, funny. Wait, but I think this is really, really fascinating because it's kind of like this thing with he was already – in the industry at a high level position. Yeah. Like what did he need to go to film school for? Like yeah. he's already a part of such big iconic moments. Like what did he need to go to film yeah, school for? You're already working. in the biz. Oh, a script. Oh, got it. Okay. <laughs> I had no idea. That's no, what that's that what was. they had to do. Yeah. Um <laughs> he said that a lot of the times when he was in school, they were like, and you can do this. And he's like, Yeah, that doesn't how that's not how it works. Like I'm, I work in the biz. That's not how it works. He, just, <laughs> he got up and just started teaching the class. He's <laughs> yeah. like, "Listen, your dreams step will be aside. crushed. Leave now." That's why they asked him not to come back. He's like, "Man, this fucking know it all." <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> he's making us look bad. Yeah. <laughs> he's actually worked in the industry. He's making us look bad. Yeah, he was the well actually guy. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. well actually. actually. Uh, so he comes back to Hollywood and finds his passion by landing his first directing gig. Which movie? Captain America, the first Avenger. <laughs> he made that in the 40s. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't 1989, know. 1989. Special effect. We talked about this actually in the Captain America uh, portion of my MCU video. Oh, hmm. That's Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Oh, 1989. Okay, okay, okay. That was his first film. Really? Is that crazy? That is crazy. Wow. Um, so he follows that with The Rocketeer. Awesome. Which I, we I, talked about. I freaking love The Rocketeer, dude. <laughs> uh, uh, for the, the uninitiated, we do, uh, a, if, you're, if you're one of our fans, you have to take a drink every time we mention a movie we've already, <laughs> already mentioned before. So he did The Rocketeer, the live action portions of The Page Master. <laughs> oh, <laughs> a horrifying <laughs> and, movie. And then the two, mo- the two movies that probably really got him the gig was uh, Jumanji in 95. Okay. Mm-hmm. So big action adventure with giant digital animals. animals yeah. <laughs> and that kid who turns into a monkey, which is the stuff of nightmares. Uh-huh. <laughs> His tail. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, and then October Sky, which was in 99. That was one of those movies that like everybody raved about at the time. And I was like, mm, it looks stupid. And I've never seen it. It's with Jake yeah. Gyllenhaal. Yeah. They build rockets like, yeah. like a science teacher. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, and that was like this critical darling. Um, and so that really like solidified him as a, as a big director. Right. So he, so he wasn't like a chump coming into Jurassic Park. No, no, no. He had a significant slate of movies behind him at this point. Yes, exactly. Okay. So, uh, he was, he was also the original designer of the Iron Giant. Just a random fact. Ah. Okay. Um, so for Jurassic Park 3, Spielberg tells Johnson, Johnston, that the problem with what Lost World, in hindsight, to Spielberg, was that all the characters were specialists. Therefore, knowing what to expect with dinosaurs versus the original, none of the characters knew what they were getting themselves into. Mm. Right. I don't think that's a a fair assessment, personally, because I still, like I said, I love Lost World, but it's also kind of like um, uh, what you're saying about aliens. Those are like hardcore Marines. They're like, yeah, we can handle this situation. And they still fuck it up. Like it still makes it interesting. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Because the, they were they were in-gen employees, but they were also like mercenaries and like big game hunters. They yeah. weren't necessarily like dinosaur experts. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, but they just, and like, like Ian Malcolm's just real good at math or something. <laughs> yeah. Chaos. 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 Yeah. He's good at chaos. Like, have you lived, if, if you've lived longer than like... 16 years of your life, everyone is an expert in chaos. <laughs> <laughs> life is chaos. Especially those last couple of years. Yeah, yes. that, yeah. was, that was deep. Yeah. That was deep. <laughs> yep, that's why, I, that's why you guys pay me the big bucks. Yeah. Oh, we pay you? For those, those nuggets I mean, of wisdom. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I'm done. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so this is where the idea of making the plot for Jurassic Park 3 
as simple as possible. Done. <laughs> Check. Sure. Why yeah. not? <laughs> uh, but Spielberg's original idea for three would be Alan Grant sneaking back onto Isla Sorna, site B, the mm-hmm. one from the second one, right. which he hadn't been to, to study raptors. But he gave Johnston complete creative control of three. And the first thing that was tossed was Grant wanting to go back <laughs> to an island with dinosaurs. Yeah. Right. Like why, Like the trauma alone <laughs> would make you go like, nah, yeah, why no, would I ever yeah, go back no. there? <laughs> yeah. No, it completely makes sense. Like it's, I think it's a better characterization for him and like a better sort of journey that he has to go through that he didn't want to go back. And then they have to find a way to get him there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, remember that. Um, oh, okay. I will remember it. In the summer of 1999, the first script was written by Craig Rosenberg. And he didn't really have any um, anything to his name at this point. But he has since become a, a, a big writer on Preacher and The Boys. Okay. Oh, like so, he's he's doing I he's doing much love better. The boys. <laughs> so he uh, he's very fucked up apparently. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Both two very dark shows. Yeah, very. Like I think he found <laughs> his uh, niche, but he his script was about five teenagers who ended up uh, stranded on Site B, and in it included a, a water dinosaur, the Cronosaurus, which is not the one in Jurassic World, not but the similar. Mesosaurus. Yeah, it's like the smaller version of it. I see, but. Johnston, again, very candid, said uh, it read like a bad episode of Friends. <laughs> yeah, because I remember the one where they get stranded on an island full of dinosaurs. Yeah, yeah. Chandler was hilarious. I mean, but but to be fair, no one told them life was going to be that way. So yeah. <laughs> Boom, you're welcome. I'll see myself out. And now you got to put the, uh, the Ian Malcolm pauses in it. Never knew that life would... Uh, uh, uh. Be that way. (laughs) Um, Okay. So they toss it. The second script. (laughs) You can't fight dinosaurs with sarcasm, Chandler. I'm sorry. (laughs) Um, Or dullness, Ross. Um, (laughs) Yeah, he's a paleontologist. (laughs) Is he really? Yeah, in the the show. Ross is a paleontologist. I've never watched Friends. That's that's pretty random. Hold hold on. Are you all just telling me right now that Friends is part of the Jurassic Park (laughs) cinematic universe? It is. They're all all connected. This is beyond. <laughs> Ross was this close for getting to go to the he's, site. He's yeah. Alan Grant's son or some shit, his <laughs> nephew. Like, he was like, he was going to have an internship to Alan Grant's like thing, and he would have been taken with him, but uh, he got uh, he's too sick busy, or something. He's too busy getting married and divorced and married and divorced. <laughs> yeah. Uh, getting kicked out of threesomes. I know that one. Anyway. I don't know what any of hey, them. They, that's were a on, thing. they were on a break. <laughs> okay. All right. So the second script was going back and forth being called Jurassic Park Extinction or Jurassic Park Breakout. Um, And this was written by Peter Buckman, who had no previous credits, um, who has since went on to go. uh, The only big thing that he's written is Aragon. Which is a terrible movie. Is that the the dragon? The talking dragon movie. It's dinosaur adjacent, you know. Yeah. so he starts at the he end just, of- He just adapted his Jurassic Park scripts. Like, I'm just going to add wings and, and they can talk. Yeah. And then <laughs> dinosaur. You know what this Jurassic Park script needs? Talking dinosaurs. Hey, they're not too far off. Um, that movie's called Dragonheart and it's amazing. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> um, okay. So at the start of- the, uh, So he started the script at the end of 1999 and it was rewritten over and over and over and over until June of 2000. In his version, Grant wants to make a raptor research station on Site B, because that's like his big passion is the mm-hmm. raptors, right? And a donor agrees to pay for it if he gives him a flyby over the island to talk about dinosaurs. So it was like a big Ooh, rich guy. Like a tour. A big rich guy who was like okay. a tour of the island, mm, okay. which is kind of what happens in right, the movie. Right, right. Um, and then he, his assistant Billy, and uh, a random family are on this plane, and they fly into a Spinosaurus. <laughs> I don't really like know how that- directly into one? I don't... Like just- I, I'm very fuzzy on these details. Okay. How come Billy always has to be an assistant's name? <laughs> okay, hold on. Listen, I had we had to pause this, pause this movie for like 20 minutes so that I could talk about how grown men should not be called Billy. <laughs> Sorry, anyone in this chat who's named Billy. But like once you hit 20, you're Bill or William. Yeah. Like, stop it. Yeah. 
I, we had this exact conversation in Gremlins, in didn't Gremlins. we? Because isn't yeah. the main character named Billy? And I was yeah. like, S- no, Bill. <laughs> You're Bill now. Yeah. Sir, you were a Grow grown up. man. Uh, this is my assistant, Billy. Like, there's no there's no cred to that. The only <laughs> the only grown man allowed to be called Billy is Billy Eichner. Sorry, just I had to throw that out there. <laughs> Billy D. Williams. Uh, oh, damn it. Okay, now you're just ruining my whole Billy theory. <laughs> yeah, but it's that, that's all because like their swagger that they've got. Right? Well, like, and they've they broken out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've yeah, broken yeah. out of it. But if you're like, mm, here's a 3D printed mm, nose whistle. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thanks, Billy. Pat, pat on the head. Yeah. Um, oh, were you stoked about that 3D printing scene? Yeah, really? but also at the same time, I was like, and that in, in early 2000s, there's no way it printed that fast and that well. <laughs> you don't know. Well, okay. First of all, you don't know how long it was doing it. And he called it something else. A rapid prototyper. A rad, rapid prototyper. Yeah, it was like, oh, that's a different that's technology. A, that's a mm, it's my rapid prototyper. Mm. <laughs> Thanks, Billy. Pat, pat on the head. <laughs> it's been printing since last June. <laughs> it's been printing for four straight months. That's why we need more money. <laughs> yeah. It's just been all going into that. <laughs> And That's the material, the material to material to make it is grind up dinosaur, dinosaur bones. bones. <laughs> it's an expensive piece of machinery, you guys. Oh, yeah. uh, so okay, there's also a B plot line of the script of the Costa Rican government holding hearings over these strange murders, uh, which turn out to be the pterodons, the the pterodactyl types. Um, Look, oh. if there's strange quote strange murders next to an island full of dinosaurs, there's <laughs> nothing strange there's about no that. Mystery. There's no mystery. It's yeah. the dinosaurs. That's the yeah. shortest true crime podcast of all time. <laughs> well, okay. There Episode we one, it was the dinosaurs. You're absolutely right <laughs> because at the end, John Hammond was like, they're, they're like footage of it, and they're like, hey, let's just leave the dinosaurs alone. Yeah, everybody knows they exist now, <laughs> yeah. so it's not confusing. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, what, what could have taking this giant bite out of this person's torso. <laughs> Although, know. if those pterodons continued evolving and became serial killers, I would totally watch that movie. <laughs> is that like the well, seventh so Jurassic Park movie? This is an idea straight from the first book. Okay. Um, that they just kind of like held over. But like in the book, it doesn't really like go that much into it. In the uh, book, they knew it was the pterodons? No, they're like, <laughs> <laughs> like oh, that was a pterodon. <laughs> oh, you're, wow, you're really good at this. Um, okay. The script was storyboarded, sets were built, were being built, were being built, and they were already $18 million deep into the movie. Without a finished script? No, this is, they're doing this script, this script, okay. uh, the second script, Breakout oh, Extinction. Oh, oh, gotcha, gotcha. And, um, and so they were like ready to go. What do you think happened? What do you, um, okay, so they had the sets built, the script was done. They something there was a storm on the island somewhere. A set burned down. A s- no, an, ex- an executive stepped in. Uh, that's probably what happened. Oh, oh, maybe like the president of whatever the hell like, Un- Universal. What, Universal is like, mm, I don't know about this. Close. They decided to scrap the entire screenplay. Okay, they're Just still the gonna make it. Okay, and they're they are. How many, how close to filming? How close do you think they're filming? Uh, I'm going to say uh, four weeks. Oh, I was going to say four. Yeah, five, five weeks. Damn, Jenny Ray, you got one right. Mm, mm, five mm, weeks mm, before mm. filming. Just, Price is right rules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm, mm. So it was Johnston and Spielberg who decided five weeks before filming that uh, it was too like convoluted why Alan Grant would even consider returning to the park. Yeah. Right. And this is the one with like the research state. Yeah, exactly. Station. Okay. Yeah. Um, which is, I also think it's kind of funny. Ironically, the final reason in the movie seems to be like a very tongue in cheek excuse for the entire movie. Right. <laughs> Money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, oh yeah. No, uh, he, he was like, nothing on earth could get me to that Island. And then someone's like, blank check. check and he's yeah. like, well, well all, all right. right. <laughs> I guess I need to finish this rapid prototyper of the velociraptor <laughs> larynx or whatever the hell. Bring back some more bones. It took that, it took that, it took that we're, five We're trying weeks to 3D print. print an entire velociraptor here. So I need a lot of money. <laughs> I could only afford the larynx. <laughs> larynx? Slings. And that was four years and two hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> it's the nose whistle. We're calling it the nose whistle. The nose whistle. <laughs> yeah, that's much easier. Um, okay, so here's a quote from the CEO of DreamWorks, Stacy Snyder, and this is about um, 
Oh, we're, we're doing a gender role reversal. I'm making Jenny Ray Johnston because there's so many good ones of these Aww. because I think she would really love Joe Johnston. And then, Clint, you're getting everybody else. Okay. Okay. Uh, you're the every man or woman. The every so, person. The every so person. So this is, this is Stacey Snyder, CEO of DreamWorks. And she's talking about how this is this is kind of one of those things where we talk about uh, how Hollywood is constantly insane. And mm. they're just just like they're just making stuff constantly with with uh, just constant changes all the time. And we, we always like to joke that oh, they're just doing this for the money. But these people are really good at what they do and they know how to do it. So this is a Stacey Snyder on the phone when this all hit the fan. OK. I was in New York, and my phone rang, and as my foot stepped into the crosswalk, Kath said... Oh, Kath and, Kathleen Kedeny, uh, the uh, producer of the film. Uh, Stephen and Joe aren't happy with the script. We're going to pull the plug. And by the time I got to the other side of this wide boulevard, she had told me what the plan was, how the $18 million would be rendered, produ- uh, rendered productive, and how they would fix the script and restart the movie. It was from one curb to the other, something horrible happened, and there was a solution. <laughs> So, wow. just Damn. like, just like instantly, like, ah, oh, shit, this happened. Yeah, we can make it work. Well, it's probably the <laughs> thing where they're like, okay, um, we're gonna scrap this, but the powers that be, you know, the Stacy Snares, like, we got to make sure that before we even say anything to her, that we have all of our shit together. So yeah. they're oh, yeah. probably like, okay, well, let's scrap it. Well, what we can do instead? So they knew that. Okay, we have to give her a crosswalk pitch. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here's what's happening. They practice it, just walking her back and forth <laughs> yeah. across the street. All right. They, they gotta, How long does it take for us to get through this process? Yeah, they, t- they time like the, the the red blinking zone walk sign. We have, we have 30 seconds, guys. Ready? <laughs> um, so Johnston calls David Coep. Um, he's the screenwriter of the first uh, Jurassic Parks. And he gives him some ideas over the phone uh, on how to fix the script. He just says, make it a rescue mission. <laughs> just simple as that. Can and I still have my 3D printer? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> that thing's still going. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> still printing. <laughs> <laughs> um, Spielberg loves it. Says, go with that. Uh, from there, they hire Alexander Payne and Jim Taylor, uh, at this point, they were nominated for Best Screenplay for Election with Matthew Broderick, Reese, Reese Witherspoon. And since he they they wrote and he, uh, Payne directed about Schmidt and Sideways. So some uh, good heavy hitters, essentially. Right. Not not schlubs. Not schlubs. And uh, they get hired in July of 2000. They they were super confused as why they were called, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but Universal was very happy with the script polish they did on Meet the Parents. So they're like, "Oh, they did a really good job on this comedy. They'll be great for dinosaurs." Yeah, because when I think of dinosaurs, the first thing I think yeah. of is Ben Stiller and, <laughs> yeah, and, Meet and, the parents. and Robert De Niro talking about I a see cat a pooping lot in a toilet. Of, uh, yeah. Similarities there between those two films. I mean, if dinosaurs have nipples, you can milk them, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe that's what it was. <laughs> maybe that they put that in there. <laughs> We need a milking of a uh, of a T Rex scene. <laughs> I, and I imagine Joe Johnston this whole time throughout this whole process just saying, "I like it." Yeah, like, uh-huh. I yeah, like sure, it. Sure, why not? I mean, I do have to point out that there is a scene that doesn't happen on camera where this the kid who's stuck on the island at one point oh, collects T yeah. Rex pee. So, oh yeah, that it happened. <laughs> and I had a you lot of conj- questions yeah, about this, that whole process. You just conjure this image of him standing under it when it's under just a like a torrential waterfall of dinosaur <laughs> pee, just holding up a beaker. Like I hope some of it makes it in. I, I mean. Dinosaurs, like in, in actuality aside, like he probably just waited until the dinosaur peed and then left and just scooped <laughs> up the puddle. <laughs> I love that the idea that he even thought about doing that, but all right. Right. Yeah, th- like, that, this kid, man, again, I tell you, is not a dinosaur expert, just a child. So <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. Read, he read Dr. He, he read a book. book. Oh, he read two books. Yeah, he read, read two books. Yeah, well, you know, oh, no, I've no, read three a book books. too, Clint. <laughs> <laughs> so. Did that book explicitly tell you how to collect dinosaur pee? It, it did not. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So they spend so much time. The 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 producers spent so much time uh, planning these elaborate sequences with this tossed script. So the writers had to plot these uh, Payne and Taylor. They had to p- plot a story that navigated to the action sequences. <laughs> So, so they kept the set pieces and then yes. just like wove a, a way, their way through those yeah, and connected exactly. the dots. We built this. We got to get here. Yes. Okay. Yeah, exactly. It's one so way to do it. They work on it for four weeks. 
uh, knowing they needed to pump up the characters and the dialogue. And according to Payne, they didn't use any of it. Um, this is uh, Alexander Payne about working on Jurassic Park. It's quite refreshing to work on something you don't really care that much about. <laughs> we care so desperately about what we do, and then you're hired to do a job. These are our broken scripts that need a little fixing, and we're ideas guys. That's all we do. Come up with the ideas. Meet the Parents was a good fit. Jurassic Park was not a good fit. <laughs> <laughs> like, just like, I mean, we don't give it a shit. <laughs> I'm not even like a film executive, and I could have told you that. It's like We need somebody. Okay, hear me out. Board meeting. <laughs> We need somebody to uh, help fix the script for Jurassic Park. Uh, ideas, go. Meet the parents. <laughs> All right, you're done. Just Hire. like the most recent movie that that one guy saw. He's yeah. like, you know, I saw this film recently. Meet the parents. Very funny. Very funny. <laughs> Billy, shut up. You know, don't come to <laughs> yeah, these meetings Billy. anymore. <laughs> oh, Give me my Billy. coffee, Billy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so the only thing that they really... Uh, got into the movie was they added the idea of bringing back Laura Dern's character, Ellie. Um, Who that's... looks great, by the way. <laughs> She's, I was like, holy shit, she looks amazing. Just had to throw that out there's there. A, there's a big thing on Twitter uh, like a month ago. They were talking about how Laura Dern was like 25 in the original Jurassic Park. And she looks like a like a like Laura a, Dern was twenty five in Jurassic Park. Yeah, and she looks like she's like 30, 35. Like she looks way older than what. But like, then she like stayed looking. That oh, way I know. No, like I'm not saying that she's her. like. She looks great. But uh, the, no, yeah, yeah. But Twitter absolutely. was kind of flipping out. They were like, wait a minute. She seemed way beyond her years in that movie. Way more adult and and smart than just like uh, uh, as young as she was. Right. Right. Um. Anyway, so. They're like, okay, thanks, Payne and Taylor. <laughs> Go to hell. Um, and, then, <laughs> and then Peter Buckman comes back, and he takes that version and writes uh, the first act of the script just in time for cameras to start rolling in Jesus. August of 2000. And then they hand it over to a very famous script doctor, Jenny Ray. Um. Craig Mazin? John oh, August? John August. Oh, okay. They give it to John August, and he helps for a bit while filming starts. He has no credit on the film. Uncredited uh, rewrite on there. I have no idea what he added. It's very little information about that. But once he's done- I'll just I'll just send him an email. I listen to that podcast religiously, so yeah. we're basically best friends. <laughs> <Okay, here. laughs> you know. <laughs> um, and then they're like, oh, well, thanks, John. Uh, here's, And then they give it back. To Buckman again, who comes to write on set. Wow! <laughs> so Jeez. this guy is uh, strike two, and then he, they were like, "Oh yeah, well, like, bring him back. Why not?" Yeah. Wow. So um, that's okay. So that's at least um, one, two, three, four, five, like six writers, six yeah. or seven writers. Yeah. That's never a good. I feel like anytime we talk about one of these movies, where it's just like. And then this writer was brought on, and then this writing team, yeah. and then by the way, the script still wasn't finished, and they started shooting. It's just like uh, this is this is already a shit show. Yeah, and and it, it just becomes a cobbled ideas uh, yeah. when it, on the final product, like the script cash grab from yeah from, <laughs> from Jewel of the Nile. Jewel of the Nile. Um, this is so we begin filming. This is what Joe Johnston says uh, this is kind of a, a really <laughs> an important <laughs> thing that kind of wraps up uh, the experience on this film. There was no original script. It's the one thing that almost made this a life-threatening ordeal for a lot of people. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Because they were just like, like cobbling pages together from like the like just random scripts. It's like, hurry, put them yeah, together. Yeah, there you go. That's what okay, we're shooting. Now today. run through the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hurt yourself. Um, we're just gonna shoot a whole day of running through the jungle while we wait for the next day's pages to be <laughs> yeah, done being yeah. written. So we'll use it somewhere. Yeah, it's it'll fine. work. Um, Johnston says he tried to convince his cast that not having a finalized script would be like a fun collaborative exercise to make up the film as they went along. Like they all got to uh, like contribute and uh, here's Sam Neill. Oh my like, god, a I'm classically all... trained like actor, and he's like, <laughs> "The fuck, the hell? yeah, <laughs> yeah." He's he's not a not an improviser. <laughs> you know, he's, Those... Yeah, he's like, uh, "Give me an occupation." Uh, a doctor. Oh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm already a doctor. <laughs> uh, paleontologist. <laughs> Raptor expert. Uh, give me a location. Uh, an island. I Isla Sorna. That's very specific. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
no, those every single person on that set was so mad. They're just like collaborative exercise, my ass. Yeah. What the hell are we doing with a production comp- like what? Maybe 200, 300 people on set. Like, yeah. Yeah. How many, of the, how many of those people were just kind of like just sitting around just like going. <sighs> OK. I wish dinosaurs were Again, real. the world's the poor script supervisor. I just always. <laughs> Is think the, I don't even think there would been a one. They just, one, one. Like, yeah. They just probably like walked right off that set. <laughs> See you later. So. This is what Joe Johnston has to say about uh, shooting with no script. Uh, We had a script for the day we were shooting and maybe the next day and sometimes a week ahead of time. But we never had a story that had a beginning, middle and end (laughs) while we were making the film. That is apparent. That's that very apparent. apparent. That tracks. That tracks. <laughs> um, it's not the way to make a movie, he continues. Sometimes we were writing the things that we were going to be shooting that afternoon. It's stupid. The only good thing about it is that it gives you the freedom to decide what you're going to do as you go along. <laughs> this is the philosophy of myself as a child <laughs> making a movie on like our old VHS recorder. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's no script. Just making it up all as you I go. Wanna, all, I, all I knew is it was going to be a Batman movie. And I wanted to play the villain, and so yeah. I created a character called the Bomb Master. This is all real. Like I, this is actually the real thing. And like we had costumes, you know, like just like they had sets, and we just kind of threw some shit together. Yeah, yeah. but what was your budget? Uh, was it forty eight million dollars? Yeah. Our, our budget was whatever we spent on the ice cream truck that came by. <laughs> It was, um, a, it was a very. Uh, it was a budget of my mom's afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> watching Screw us. it! We'll do it live. <laughs> I love this quote so much. Yeah, see, we were writing like, things we were going to be shooting that afternoon. It's stupid. <laughs> That's hilarious. So William H Macy confirms this, saying that a 12, 12 hour day would consist of maybe completing a fourth of the page, maybe an eighth of the page of a of the script. Quote and, script, yeah. <laughs> and Johnson does mention at one point that Macy wrote one of these scenes. I don't know what. William one, H Macy wrote one. One of the scenes. It was part of the scene where he was like. Uh, he, he, I put that boat in the water and he's then like, a trailer uh, the went one, in the water. The one about how he lost 25 pounds. Yeah, I've been swimming. Lost 25 pounds. <laughs> yeah. um, hey, can we make sure that we get that bit about me losing 25 pounds? Yeah, can, we, bring, can we bring that back? I'm going to be taking my shirt off in this scene, so I want everybody to know how <laughs> yeah. hard I worked to get this body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. To get this like early 2000s dad bod. <laughs> and stash. <laughs> and mustache. I, I I think William H. Macy is a is a great actor. Yeah, he's one of those actors that you just... Like everything he's in, he's still great. Yeah, I and I love. I think Taya Leone is also a really good actor. Mm-hmm. But the two of them together in this movie, like it was just yeah. it was, didn't work. Mm, yeah, yeah. No wonder they got divorced. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, um, Sam Neill was the only one that was doing <laughs> any kind of work in this movie. What is he though? I don't know. Well, we'll get into that at the end. I mean, okay. he was at least like his character felt consistent with the first movie. Yeah, I mean, I'll give you that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Johnston uh, had a love hate relationship with the dinosaur animatronics. So keep in mind, remember, he wanted to make this goddamn movie twice. Yeah. <laughs> like he was like, make, let me make one of these. Be careful what you wish for. And I was like, yeah. oh Johnston. wait, I, the dinosaurs. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so it takes hours with dozens of puppeteers and sometimes up to like 20, 30 puppeteers to do some of these scenes. And if one of them is not doing their task, going back to puppeteers, um, one of them sucks, like none of it works. Right. Yeah. So you get like a weird this, slack jaw. Yeah, spine <laughs> <Yeah. know? laughs> Like one kind of like weird limp arm. Like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and you also have to think about, oh, I'll go into this in a second, but okay. This is what Johnston said about (laughs) dinosaurs. He said, directing dinosaurs is fun the first couple of times, but you need a bullhorn and a two by four to really do it effectively. (laughs) What's the two by four for? Puppeteer, get it right. (laughs) I thought we'd be like, if like the spinosaurus is like jaw was open, he's like, oh shit. Yeah, (laughs) take a two by four, like push it back up. Yank it, yank it up there. Um, I mean, if you have to, if you have to ask what the two by four is for, then you're not. A yeah, yeah, either. you're not. You have no idea. Yeah, <laughs> dir- get off set, yeah. Billy. You don't know what the director's two by four is for. <laughs> it's a very important piece of film equipment. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah, I hear Billy. Oh my, my name is William. Sir. Not, not yet. It is. Not until <laughs> yeah, you've you grown not the earned fuck it. Up. Yeah. yeah. So uh, on the first day of <laughs> Billy, shooting, Billy's have to earn their own names. 
can't wait until I become a William. Yes. <laughs> um, so uh, on the first day of shooting, one of these sequences with the dinosaurs, uh, Spielberg comes by and he says to Johnston, boy, b- boy, I'm glad I don't have to do this. <laughs> wow. Because he's Just like, Just rub uh, it in. <laughs> yeah, right. Jeez. Wow. Um, so uh, to give you an idea, the T-Rex from Jurassic Park 1 weighed five tons and needed a 300 horsepower engine. The Spinosaurus weighed 12 tons mm. and needed a thousand power a uh, thousand horsepower engine. Damn. So you're talking about a lot of mechanics in there. And yeah. if anything goes wrong, if it just goes, I'm going to swing to the left all of a sudden, that could literally kill someone. That's 12 tons of yeah. robot. That's yeah. 12 tons yeah, exactly. of dinosaur, baby. Yeah, swinging at an immense speed. Yeah. And this was like something that constantly happened where people Jeez. were just out of the way, per- like just in time. Not getting hurt. Well, they, blew or... their, they blew their their robot budget on all those writers <laughs> and on the printer. Yeah. They, they blew their safety, their dinosaur safety budget. Um, so uh, Johnston described the Spinosaurus as a big dummy, but still an animal. If you didn't want to, that you didn't want to screw with, which is goes exactly mm-hmm. with what you were saying, Jenny Ray, watching the movie, where well, you were the like, dinosaurs are way more dumb. Yeah, well, you were like the yeah. Spinosaurus. Like, why the hell? The Spinosaurus just seems like it, intent it, on killing. Yeah, it wasn't. It was acting more like like Jason or Freddy or like a weird like horror movie serial killer than an animal. And that's the thing that I liked so much about the first Jurassic Park is that like, the, yeah, the T Rex was kind of like it was like you know fucking up the jeep and like trying to get at the kids and it was, but it would get distracted by stuff and kind of wander off because it's like <laughs> yeah. at the end of the day it's an animal and it's gonna have animal instincts. But this Spinosaurus was like everywhere Must they kill. were all yeah. the time. It was like its intent was so murderous <laughs> and just like not realistic. Like I think this my, one of my f- favorite moments uh, from the movie is uh, from. Uh, that shot where they go, they hear the phone ring and they turn around and the Spinosaurus is standing right there just, just like staring, staring at them. <laughs> I love that move moment because it is such a cool moment. It makes no goddamn sense. <laughs> like, like why would the Spinosaurus like walk up and be all like, hey, guys. Hey guys what's up? <laughs> like, I'm why would an you. animal do that? It would not. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Although I did, I, I loved the sat phone bit. That, that like they were like I don't have the sat phone where do you have a and then it's like they hear it again and they turn around and he's just standing there. I'm yeah. like ah oh, genius I, <laughs> yeah I like I think that that's moment. a really good moment yeah. it makes no sense but it was really good <laughs> um, so during the uh, Spinosaurus attack on the plane there is only one shot uh, so during that whole sequence there is only one shot with stuntmen the rest are the real actors getting beat up in that plane. Oh, really? Like that whole rolling yeah. sequence is it and crushing and stuff like that. Um, this is what Joe Johnston said about uh, the, the actors experiencing this. <laughs> I don't know how the actors got out without broken limbs and amputations. It was at all times safe, I'm told. <laughs> but it's amazing to see what they go through. Wow. I'm told. Look, I was told it was completely safe. Is is it safe? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, he didn't know because he was, he was too busy with smacking the robot with the two by four. I he know. No he he, he walks up like with the two by two four. By four. Like, Are we ready? Yeah. Hey, is this safe? The stunt corner just like, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, that seems to be. Thumbs up. All the while he gets splinters in his thumb. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, he's just sitting there digging at his thumb, getting the splinter out. Yeah, roll again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you okay, um, Sam? All right, okay, cool. <laughs> uh, Tay Leone likes to joke that there was more makeup to conceal their real wounds <laughs> versus their fake ones. Wow, Jeez. all the bruises and shit. All the bruises and shit. Yeah, that's interesting because I commented to you as you were watching this how <laughs> shitty their wound makeup effects looked. I was like, did someone just like take some like red paint and just go bleh, slap down? Bleh. And just like it was so, it was like the worst looking makeup effects. It did not look like they were actual wounds at all. So that's really maybe they were like, 
oh, they like did such a such a good job covering up their actual like wounds that they're like, oh, they used up all the good makeup yeah. for the real. Wait, wounds. now we have to huh, just wipe some of it off. Hopefully, that'll look like they got attacked by a dinosaur. They could have saved just a ton of money if they would just been like, they good. You look good. Yeah, like, great. Your bruises, <laughs> love it. I mean, and I would think like I was thinking that too. I was kind of like. Maybe they should have just left their bruises mm-hmm. for for the shooting, but then like consistency sake, it would be kind of like nonsense. Mm-hmm. Right. That's right. The, two, the last of the two by fours for consistency. <laughs> <laughs> you got Oh, you. Oh, look, your wounds all healed. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> <laughs> How's that bruise? Ah, oh, it's, it's 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 clearing it's up pretty nice. Better. Mm, needs to be more red and blue. And smack. <laughs> Give me the two by four. <laughs> the director's two by four. <laughs> the, the makeup department just goes to Home Depot. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then like, uh, Bill, Ma- uh, Bill Macy, uh, some people call him, not Billy Macy. Um, Will, <laughs> William H. Macy. People, people do not call him Billy Macy. That's insane. <laughs> I have no idea. I've heard him call Bill, Bill Macy before, Gross. but he talks it's about weird. a lot about like how, it, like a lot of the times running around in the, uh, in the jungle or even a lot of the stuff in the jungle is actually sets, which is actually pretty impressive. Um, oh, interesting. And uh, he just said, he's just running into shit all the time, like getting black eyes and uh, bruised knees. So during the finale with Macy on the crane, mm-hmm. um, so the part where he's like kind of dangling there yeah. and the Spinosaurus is trying to grab him. Oh, right. Uh, the crane snapped in half before it was supposed to because it does kind of do that. It's meant to do that, uh, but it was like too early. So he dropped. And he was on a safety line, but it wasn't like as quite as taut <laughs> as it should have been. Ooh. Like, hey, I was told it was safe. <laughs> I was told. Yeah, was I safe. was told. I was told. <laughs> so he fell a bit, little further than they thought. Oh. And oh, when it caught him, it was like uh, just his full body weight just <sighs> punching him in the chest. Ooh. And so just right on his chest. And so he like he was joking that he would basically had a tattoo on his chest wow. after a while after. With that, when that after that happened. probably would have been softer if they just let him fall. <laughs> yeah, into the water. <laughs> yeah. Ow. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. So the actors are getting beat up. Beat up. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So with all this shit going down, Macy starts doing some interviews where he does not mince words. Uh, Clint will be our William H. Macy. Since I'm not as good as William H. Macy, I'm just gonna be Billy Macy. <laughs> <laughs> the lesser Macy. The lesser Macy. <laughs> The script has been evolving and being rewritten as we go. And what you want to say is, who launched a $100 million ship without a rudder? And who's getting fired for this? <laughs> but that's the way it goes. The way they make, that's the way they make these movies. Big deal. I think someone should be shot, but not in charge. But I'm but, not in charge. But I'm not in charge. <laughs> And then asked, he's, so so he's he's really pissed, obviously. Just yeah. like, why the fuck is this going on? Yeah, like, yeah. his he's probably that giant bruise on his chest, and he's like, who the fuck do I like blame for this? So who is in charge, right? Executive, you could say, executive producer Steven Spielberg, and this is what his, he Macy said about Spielberg. Spielberg has yet to be spotted on set. There's a chair that's got Steven's name on it that's <laughs> always on set. You don't know if that's a threat or a promise. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's because he was too busy being on the set of Poltergeist, a movie he wasn't supposed to be on yeah, the set of. That's movie. what was happening. Uh, he was too busy doing AI. You know, we're all thankful for that, uh, <laughs> that we got these two movies out of it, AI and Jurassic I feel Park like those 3. directors should have been swapped. <laughs> Johnston should have finished AI. <laughs> yeah. And Spielberg should have done Jurassic Park 3. That feels Maybe. right. Um, but William H. Macy admits that the footage rocks, and sometimes it, it's awesome to make something that is just pure joy. Johnston thinks Macy's comments were to reporters that caught him on a bad day, because this was in the middle of shooting. Oh. Um, and he knows the he knows the actors were constantly cold, wet muddy, bruised, cut up, like everything, right? Yeah. Right. And yet he found Macy and everyone else to be like a complete professional throughout. Uh, I guess it's really hard to tell with Joe Johnston if they were yelling at him. Okay. Let me show you my two by four. <laughs> um, but he admits that it was a difficult production and there were multiple accidents uh, accidents that could have truly injured Macy or the rest of the, the cast and crew. I just imagine 
Joe Johnson's two by four with the name Billy carved into it. <laughs> <laughs> um, la- later, Macy added, it was about the most amazing thing I've ever done in this business. So he came around on it. I yeah, I get it though. I think at the time, sometimes when you're like working on a movie like that, you're like you said, you're cold, you're wet, you're beat up, you're tired, and you're just gonna be grumpy. And then later, you're like, I can just laugh about how horrible that yeah, was that and was, what a yeah. shit show that was because I came out of it alive. Yeah, someone who did not like it, Alessandro Nivola, uh, who played Billy. Um, also, the only other thing that I think I've known him from is he plays the younger brother. Of Nicolas Cage in Face Off. Interesting. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, He called it a trying experience where he had no grasp on his character and he would never return for a Jurassic Park 4. That tracks. He Um, had no grasp on his character, Billy. (laughs) But the pterodons had a grasp on him. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, This is what he said about the experience. It was kind of maddening. I have to say, Sam Neill got me through it because he played ukulele. And we could sit around in our trailers and strum Beach Boy songs. If it hadn't been for that, I would have gone out of my mind. <laughs> I cannot imagine Sam Neill playing the ukulele. That seems <laughs> that's ins- what you got out of that. Wild. <laughs> yeah, that's that. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't know who was talking. Billy, I don't know what he said. <laughs> Sam Neill was his Bob Hoskins with whiskey. Yeah, oh. there you go. Yeah. That was their vice. Yeah, yeah. The, the the ukulele. ukulele. The ukulele. Oh. <laughs> it's um, a gateway instrument. It's a yeah. <laughs> um, so Johnston uh, called it a very grueling, painful, uncomfortable 18 weeks of shooting, saying that it was technically troublesome. There were days where uh, they were only able to shoot one page of the script and on really bad days, maybe a sentence. <laughs> uh, and That's he, a nightmare. Right? That's like, a nightmare. Can you imagine just being like, oh, my God, we're getting nothing done? No, I cannot. Uh, He also states that despite all the problems, they were only a few days over the production timeline, mainly due to weather. And uh, one interesting note, one of the reshoots was to film an ending. Really? (laughs) All right. So they they finished finished what they had. They filmed in Hawaii. They filmed uh all their stuff in Hawaii, come back, go do all their stuff in the studio. And then they're like, we still have no ending. Yeah. And so they had to go back to Hawaii to film that ending. Thank you for air quoting very strongly air quoting ending <laughs> yeah. because you're correct. What, what like how much of the ending? I think it's they... just that part where they like just at the beach. The beach where they just show up. Well, and all like... of a sudden, all of a sudden, the military's there and yeah. some and some executive from InGen. And <laughs> yeah, like... some random dude, some guy lost lost style on the beach in a suit, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> going Alan. <laughs> uh, oh my. Okay, it's all coming back to me now. No, I had a conversation with somebody who reached out to us on Instagram, and they were like, you know, I would have put up with this movie's shit if it wasn't for that lack of an ending. And I went, wait, how did this movie end? And I had watched it two days before, (laughs) and I could not remember how it ended. I got to say, though, the the response time of Sam Neill, of, you know, Dr. Alan Grant calling Ellie with the satellite phone and Mm -hmm. having to get the kid to you know, after him watching Barney to actually talk to Ellie to just say Island B river. Yeah. And then from that to like have the whole, whole military squad, like come onto the beach, like exactly where they needed to be. Dude, like, yeah. Exactly. Where, yeah. Ellie's amazing. Off of, off of river. That's all she got <laughs> yeah. out of that conversation. <laughs> the river. Uh, where the fuck is he? Montana? Yeah. Like... yeah. <laughs> he could be anywhere. She mobilized like the entire U.S. like armed forces yeah. in the, the fastest I've ever seen. To be fair, that was her husband. Uh, how, d- <laughs> how dare you? You don't think she can mobilize the yeah. army? She's so, Lara fucking Dern. Okay. At the end of the day, this is what Johnston said about, uh, about making the film and ha- his troubles with it. Now, I want to... Uh, Clarify, the last thing that he says is a joke. Oh, it does say laughs in here, so <laughs> okay. that's, that's a good cue. Um, all right, Joe says, there were actually phone calls where I called my agent and I said, look, you have to get me off this movie. I don't care what it takes. I don't care if it's the end of my career, and you have to get me off tomorrow. And he didn't do it, obviously. It's hard enough to make a movie when you've got a script that you really love and it's been polished to death. But to start over and start shooting with a hundred million movie without a script, you want to blow your brains out. It was actually much harder on the production designer than it was on me. He had to literally build things sometimes overnight. He almost hung himself. <laughs>, Laughs. Wow. Again, he wanted to do this. 
You asked for this joke. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, of his own making. Yeah. He's that's yeah, I mean that's the thing is that's why I was saying that like when he was trying to pitch this as a some like fun like team building exercise of like we're making a fully collaborative movie it's, it's just, just camp everybody there is yeah, like no camp. no no because what you're t- telling me right now is that my the next four months of my life are going to be an absolute nightmare yeah is what you're telling me behind his back some of the crew was like i heard usc didn't want him back yeah <laughs> <laughs> do you hear he got kicked out of film school <laughs> granted he's made some really good movies oh yeah, yeah oh yeah absolutely yes no his um it's these quotes do not like jive with the videos I've seen of him being the sleepiest person of all time. <laughs> I love these quotes though. That's what I was saying. I think I feel like he would become he's a kind of a hero to you but for how like honest he is. <laughs> for how much he doesn't give a shit and just says <laughs> well, like, what really, he thinks. Like he a lot of this... himself. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's crazy that the, all these quotes are before the movie came out. Wow. Like this is him. They're like, "Hey, you need to app, you need to sell the movie. You need to pitch the movie because this is yeah. coming out in a week." And and he's, and like, he's like, "Fuck that! I'm going to tell the truth. I respect yeah. that. I yeah. respect that a lot." So so going in, understand that I this was really really <laughs> freaking hard. So, so Joe, yeah. tell us what's your favorite part about working on this movie. The part when I called my agent and tried to get out of it. Tried to get out of it. <laughs> So, if you've never listened to us before, at the end of each episode, we ask a question. Uh, After everything we've talked about, all the problems, all the trials and tribulations the cast and crew endured, was the final film worth all of that trouble? Was it worth it? But, before we give our opinions on that, we would love to hear from you guys, the the community. Um, Again, there is another poll on our YouTube page. Go to the community page and you will see the question there. And it's uh, yes, no, or uh, I I have mixed feelings about it. (laughs) Without giving my full answer for the reason with just that that, that raptor saying his name in his dream, (laughs) saying Alan, that alone is worth it. (laughs) <laughs> That's not my point. <laughs> Spoiler alert. So, okay. Now, while we wait for you guys to go there and uh, vote so we can uh, see what everybody thinks about it um, and then talk about Lost World in a second, uh, we're gonna do, I'm just going to shoot off some random facts about the movie. What do you, the audience here, everybody, um, and you guys can throw it out in the comments, what do you think only, only cost $2,000 in this movie? And I'll let you guys think about that as well. <laughs> Only two thousand dollars in this movie. Okay? Like this is like the like most expensive thing or the least expensive. Like, oh, Just like something like... that was surprisingly so... cheap. Okay. Okay. We'll come back to it. Okay. Okay. Um, some random facts. Uh, Sam Neil came back because he didn't think he was very good in the first one. What? <laughs> oh, <laughs> come Sam. on, Sam. <laughs> Sam. It's kind of interesting. He felt like he said he didn't feel like his character was like he got there enough and hmm. he was he was relying he was too in awe of everything that was going on that he was that he was being directed by Steven Spielberg and there was all these crazy dinosaurs that he feels like he didn't quite I was like, get wait, to wait, were there character. were there real dinosaurs there he was so, <laughs> I, uh, these dinosaurs they're so Look, when awe he, inspiring when he sees the the brachiosaurus uh-huh. for the first time and he like he takes off his, his glasses <laughs> and I, was like, I felt that as a kid I was like oh yeah. Everyone yes. still feels that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I watched. I watched Jurassic Park just like like a week ago. Yeah. Or... It's not the effects of that scene that make it. It's the it's the action. It's yeah. there. It's his face and it's her face and their reaction yeah. to seeing Come that on, si- don't sight sell your, for don't, the first don't time. Don't sell yourself. It's like yeah. so amazing. Right. I I I agree. Uh, Laura Dern shot all of her scenes in one day. Okay, that tracks. Yeah, that tracks. <laughs> um, on set, the cast and crew joked that the rap gift would be the final script. <laughs> <laughs> and here you go. You guys have worked so hard. Here's a Congratulations. Here's the script. <laughs> I am pretty sure I didn't say that line. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, one of the shooting scripts had the raptors kill the Spinosaurus. So one, it kind of ends with like when... Macy's on the crane. He starts uh, using the nose whistle, the raptor nose whistle, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then like all the raptors come out of the the jungle and they all start attacking the spinosaurus. But then they were like, "That's a little like, why the hell would a raptor do that?" We'll save <laughs> like, that one for Jurassic World. Y- yes, exactly. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> holding on to stuff. We well, might talk if, about this, but if only they knew that all you had to do to stop a dinosaur is just to put your hand up. <laughs> if only they knew that. Yeah, it's just well, like that easy. The real Owen Grady, the real dinosaur expert. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Rough cut of the film, 
guess how long? Um, well, based on the uh, all the jungle running scenes <coughs> and all the improv, um, four all hours. Improv. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a big long form <laughs> improv just, movie. Yeah, four uh, hours. Just, just just good three hours of it is just them in the jungle, just running, just talking the about the all the other times that. <laughs> William H. Macy wrecked cars. Because <laughs> it's only like what the final cut's only like like an hour and a it's half. It's only ninety two minutes. Right, I'm gonna say it was I'm gonna say it was probably two hours. I'm gonna go with three. Ninety six <laughs> minutes. Oh, so I thought like, it was. I thought there was going to be significantly more. No, oh, okay. no, isn't that cool? wow? So this was. I don't know if it was always intended to be that short. He likes John Johnston says that it was always meant to be like a short, quick movie. But I kind of feel like some of that might have been just because they just didn't have anything right. to really like juicy moment to like uh, get into. Um, the visual look. F- I, look you and I have an improv comedy background. Like, there's never been a scene that you and I have ever performed where I was like, that could be a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks just, for that. We just need I'm, an audience. I'm very glad. We just need an audience uh, of people holding a two by fours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll get our best damn performance just out of this. be funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, the visual effects team was very proud of their jiggle physics. <laughs> um, meeting the the physics on the uh like uh like the, the dinosaurs jello, like from the first one like <laughs> on that the... <laughs> on those dino booties <laughs> yes the dino booties <laughs> working dinos yeah um literally like their muscles the way they would jiggle when they when they move and they stomp mm-hmm. the ground like their their muscles would contract and stuff like that i don't like the term jiggle jiggle physics physics <laughs> Like, can, like, can we muscle, just call it like dino physics or muscle physics <laughs> i know just regular body physics Jiggle no, physics. It, That's my stage name. They, they, <laughs> DJ Jizzle Physics. I think Jizzle Physics. Jiggle um, Physics. One, That's just, hard to say. Jizzle, 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 jizzle Physics. <laughs> okay. Um. This is the last thing. Last quote from uh, Joe Johnston. Um. About the movie and uh its chances at um. Uh, the box office, and this is a week before release. I think the problem with Rocketeer and October Sky is that I had too much fun making them. I've realized that when I have fun doing something, it bombs at the box office. Go figure. Making Jurassic Park 3 was a living hell on a daily basis, so hopefully it'll be huge. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Joe. Classic Joe. (laughs) I'm going to live my life with the energy of Joe Johnson. (laughs) It's so black and white for him, too. Like, well, I loved making Rocketeer. It didn't do so well. I hated making Jurassic Park 3. Hopefully it'll do well. Oh, boy, it's no, sorry, great. buddy. Okay. Jurassic Park 3 opened July 18th, 2001. It made $181 million in the U.S. with a worldwide total of $368 million. Again, another two-thirds. So it's about one-third across the board of what the original Jurassic Park made. Mm. It is the lowest grossing of the franchise. Uh, Guesses on budget. Uh, I'm going to say there's probably a similar trend where it was still more expensive. So whatever, like let's just add a hundred million to whatever Jurassic Park Lost World was. Let's just add a hundred million to whatever that was. <laughs> so a hundred and hundred and fifty million. Remember, there's the printer, yeah, 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 the, yeah, the yeah. rapid prototype, and whatever and whatever that two thousand dollars is for. <laughs> oh my God, was it the rapid prototyper that cost two thousand dollars? <laughs> I bet. What do you guys think the two thousand dollars was? Uh, I'm gonna say it was Laura Dern's just like day pay because she she, could, she just <laughs> her, did it in one day. Oh my God, her per diem. Wow, good for her. Two thousand dollar per diem. I'm gonna say it was the nose whistle. The nose whistle? Yeah. That's such a stupid name. <laughs> it's too late. We're calling it that. Well, I don't know what Ryan's guess is. Ryan, what yeah, do you what, think? Yeah, Ryan, what do you think it was? Is this the one where they had that uh, that phone in the, the dinosaur's stomach? Like he ate the phone? Was that number three? Yes. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to guess the, the Nokia ringtone. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's that's that is an amazing guess. <laughs> um, January, did you have a guess? I I gave like four guesses. Hair gel, Hair gel, <laughs> well guessed. Says that person. I said the nose whistle, um, Lardern's per diem, 
William, William H. H. Macy's, Macy's mustache. mustache. Yes. The William, upkeep for that. The, the mustache grease. Wait, do you think it was the grease? Like it's a real mustache or just like a $2,000 mustache that they slapped it's, on him? It's his, or is the upkeep? He didn't it, want to grow a mustache. So they're like, okay, we'll pay you $2,000 to grow a mustache. <laughs> Maybe. Or like his must, his personal mustache groomer. Oh, yeah. The raptor eggs. The raptor eggs. Mm, okay. Kay. That's interesting. I like that one. <laughs> The gun, the sound, gun effect. sound effect budget. <laughs> oh. Was there even a gun? Oh, it was just in the background. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. The correct answer. Oh, and I'm going to also add the water slap sound oh, effects. Oh, yeah. The to water that slap bullshit. sound effects were really bad oh, in the movie. Oh, my goodness. I'm like, what, what are they, what fully are they doing in this well, situation? One there more. was Here one sexy dinosaur, though. Did you guys catch that sexy dinosaur? Sexy dinosaur. Yeah. It was one of, it was one of the pterodons where he like turns around like all seductively, like his, his like head, you know, his, oh, when over they, his shoulder. Oh, yeah. Oh, that yeah. Weird... <laughs> With his crooked nose. With yeah. like the, like the big long. Yeah. 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 That yeah. pterodon could get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jiggle j- physics. So Sam Neill's hat. <laughs> the correct answer was the rights for Barney. Oh, <laughs> oh, I should have known the rights. I mean, um, that's actually pretty cheap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they said that they were very like excited to be a part of it. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Wow. The rights for Barney. $2, That's really all what the Raptors were trying to just say. It was just they were just gonna try to come up to everybody just singing, I love you. <laughs> you love me. We're a happy family. <laughs> oh, and then Spielberg wrote a contract right before the movie was made where he received 20% of the gross. You can, oh, wow. <laughs> oh. You cannot he get, he gets whatever he wants. <laughs> Wait, Spielberg, right, Spielberg? right before it was made? Yes. So Spielberg, even though he wasn't gonna make it, you sneaky. He was just like, "Oh, this is mine now." Like well, twenty percent. Well, he learned his he learned his lesson from making a similar bet with Lucas. Um, oh yeah, with the uh, with the rights, like with the Star Wars um, gross. Like like they made this bet. Like if it does well, Spielberg because Spielberg's like, "Oh, Lucas, this is gonna be really good." And Lucas, like, "Nah, I don't know." He's like, "I bet you anything that if it's good, then I'll get like a bunch of." profit from it and Luke's like oh, okay yeah fine not expecting it to be good at all and then Star Wars is what it is now so <laughs> yeah Spielberg's just gets... like just like dancing on a pile of money I'm gonna buy me some ukuleles that's Jurassic Park 3 and rapid prototypers he has so many rapid prototypers um so uh Rotten Tomatoes for Jurassic Park 3 51% critics 36% audiences I okay so that's crazy to me that the critics thought it was on par with Lost World. That's that's insane to me. Um, and uh, Johnston has turned down sequels to everything he's made um, and says he was not interested in doing a Jurassic Park 4 after all the things he went through. Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. So, so you're telling me he did not direct Honey, I Blew Up the Baby? <laughs> no, he did not. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, okay. Was it worth it? I mean, uh, you already heard your opinion because of that one scene. I just, the, Alan, the, Alan. The, the, the raptor talking to him in his dream. Okay, so somewhere I read that, and I, w- I couldn't really like verify uh, like an actual source, that Joe Johnson like had a fight to keep that in the movie. Really? <laughs> but I don't know. He's Just... rampaging on set with the with the two by four. I need my dinosaur raptor talking. Yeah, you he don't just, understand. If we don't really, do that, it won't hit ninety minutes. He yeah. really wanted to make a talking dinosaur movie, is what it sounds like. <laughs> well, yeah. I think that was the four minutes that was cut was just more talking raptors. Yeah, just a conversation, conversation between the raptor and Alan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're gonna go to an island. You're gonna probably get die there. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Well, you're just a six foot turkey. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I um, heard a kid say one. Zing. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it wasn't worth it. Sounds like it was a pain in the ass to make, and it's not a great movie. Like it didn't really give us anything new in the Jurassic Park mm-hmm. world. Like we had the new dinosaur, the Spinosaurus, which was like fine, but it wasn't that cool. Um, like there wasn't any like advancement in like animatronic technology. It didn't like make anybody's careers really. It just kind of was just like it's a movie. It happened like burp, and you we've know. forgotten about it. Yeah, and like <laughs> Moved every, on. right, and like it, it's not very many people like it. It's like not considered. It's I, it's honestly not. It's not a bad movie. It's just also not a good movie. It's just like they went through a lot of painstaking shit just to make like 
a movie, just like a <laughs> middle of the road movie. Now, I haven't seen the most recent Jurassic World movie. Either have I. But I would imagine that if you just plucked Jurassic Park 3 out of the mix and out of everybody's, you know, consciousness, consciousness <laughs> it would have zero effect on anything else that happened in any of the other movies afterwards. That's probably, I, yeah, so, true. And, yeah. and for that, and with what Ray said, I, I don't think it was worth it. Yeah. I just really like listening. I just like this, that stupid raptor. <laughs> I just think that's, I just think it's fucking <laughs> hilarious. That one, that one gift. I've, I've used that it? thing no le- no fewer than like five times this week <laughs> <laughs> while, prom- while promoting this thing that we're doing here with Reddit. I have used that thing no less than five times. Yeah. I saw a lot of comments about people going, uh, leading up to this that were like, why does everybody, everybody focuses on that one dumb thing and then yeah. doesn't like, uh, and and makes it uh, that the rest of the movie is good, and that we're, you're you're just focusing on that one stupid moment. But for me, I, I would I say this movie is absolutely not worth it. Right, it's not as fun. It doesn't have nearly the craft of what Spielberg did on both of the others. And there are briefest of moments of something like great or mm-hmm. something really good, like the. The pterodon, uh, like coming out of the the small of the fog, or like I said, the spinosaurus just standing there, um, or will... seeing a sp- the T Rex and the spinosaurus fight. Mm-hmm. Like there's like these like these moments, but then um, the movie starts and it goes his Isla Sorna restrictor, yeah, <laughs> and you instantly just go. I remember being in the theater like. Ooh, that's that's a rough. <laughs> that's a rough, in, a rough opening to this movie. Yeah, and that first scene like makes no sense. Right, <laughs> like the pterodons like attack the people on the boat, but not the people in the air. Is that what? Yeah, I, I was, guess I that's... was gonna. I was gonna ask what attacked the people on the boat. Yeah, yeah what was right? in? Yeah, because why would it? Why would it have been the pterodons? Because they were in the bird cage. They didn't yeah, get out until it, the end of the movie. And it sets up. That they didn't shut the gate at the end of the movie. Yeah. So, like, and what was, was was that? Just a shark? It was just a shark attack. <laughs> that was the other dinosaur <laughs> was that Jaws? was cut. The the Chronosaurus. <gasps> yeah, yeah. But he oh, perfectly right. jumped up and grabbed all the people on the boat off the boat, and the yeah. boat just kept going. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. In the fog, he knew exactly when to do it. That's Look, a smart ass dinosaur. We'll never know. They probably had no idea. They just needed to open their movie. They just needed to get that kid on that island. <sighs> I, I I think the movie is so rough. It's very rough. And like it has like these mo- like there's these little like clever ideas in there. Like I think actually the stuff with the raptors being smarter is actually really cool. But it doesn't really dive into it very much. Mm. It just kind of like is just like here's a moment. Like the part where they hit he's pushing the fence the the gate against him. Uh-huh. And then the raptor like looks, looks up. Like, like that's a good moment. Yeah. Like you're like, oh shit, it's figuring it out. Right, right. Um right. And uh, I kind of like the part where they're all talking and the, the, the females are obviously like in, uh, in charge. Um, I like all like I like that kind of stuff, but I, I don't know. I or, mean, yeah, sure. They're smart. But then later on, we decide that, you know, we figure <laughs> out that they're not smart enough to know that a hand is just a hand you can bite and you don't need to you don't need to bite it. Yeah. yeah. And um, and the one other thing that I think is very interesting um, was that what Spinosaurus that wasn't on InGen's list. Like, that's such an interesting line. Oh, and right. And it was that, like, that, oh, like, there's InGen like InGen was making other dinosaurs that they weren't disclosing. Yeah, like, it never goes back to that. <laughs> yeah, that is an interesting <laughs> I bit. mean, or does it go to, like, three more movies? The Jurassic World. Well, I mean, at, at well, any rate, Joe Johnson's not going to be a part of it. Yeah, he's like, I don't give <laughs> well, a shit. Well, I mean, at this point, like, they were all set it up that, that they were actually real Dinosaurs, right? Like th- they those existed, and the Jurassic World's like, let's just make up some shit. Oh, right, they're, that's right. They're like combining dinosaurs. Like, let's make a dinosaur for an v- attraction that is camouflaged. <laughs> yeah, sure, that makes why sense. Not? <laughs> uh, you plan to have dinosaurs on uh, on, on your dinosaur tour, <laughs> tour right? Yeah. 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 Um, so, this so is, this... we are being told that the first assistant editor, VFX editor, um, is in the chat. Uh, uh yes, Ryan. Let's let's let him in. Let's talk to him. Here he is. Do you want to unmute yourself and see if we can get you? Hello. Hey, Hello. Uh, welcome to. Yeah. I good. Welcome to our shit show. I got the <laughs> notification. I was like, oh, this is so up my alley. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Well, so, we, your you know. your name? Scott Janish. Hi. Hey. Nice. To, nice to talk to you. This is this is amazing. Um, so how, how was your experience working on this working on this film? 
Okay, so from an editorial visual effects standpoint, uh, it was actually pretty straightforward. Um, everything, okay. everything looked great. I mean, you know, the final movie, uh, what, you know, what you shoot and what you end up with in the final movie are frequently two very different things. Um, yes. The uh, the production ran um, from our perspective. Production ran well. You know, everything was delivered to us on time, clean. Everything worked technically. Um, you know, story wise, it was funny when you guys were talking about the first cut or um, versus the uh, final duration. Yeah, there was yeah. not there was not a lot of fluff there to take out at all. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just the movie just. It, it was what it was, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, like, you know, from our perspective, it was like, you know, we had a small crew in editorial. We were great. ILM did the visual effects, you know, and they're just a machine, you know, and basically yes. you, you get what right. you get. And in fact, even on that level, um, and, and, uh, I forget what it is somewhere in the beginning of the movie, there's a shot of somebody on a, a parasail that right. flies in mm -hmm. and like ILM when they delivered that shot. And I think it was literally like on the last day of our delivery schedule and it was completely wrong. And, you know, and you're calling up trying to find people and you're like, Hey, the shot is just shit. You know what? What the hell? <laughs> and so, oh my god, it's that's so incredible that you bring that up because I remember it because I just watched this four days ago and I remember seeing that shot of the 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 guy and the kid. Oh, the on, green on, screen, yeah. And I, well, yeah. What are you? What are you for referring to? It was. I, I honestly, I haven't watched the movie since I finished it. So, <laughs> somebody on a parasail that's coming to camera and kind of swinging back and forth. I, I couldn't right. even yeah. tell you more than that. Um, it's you know it's been hard for many years, and you know and the thing was completely off track. Just just I don't know what happened with the animation, you know. And finally, you get somebody on the phone at ILM, and you're like, you know, the shot's all screwed up. You guys got to fix it. Boom. And it's like, it's interesting because ILM is such a monstrous machine, you know, yeah. that uh, um, basically you get like nothing until they swing all of their people onto your show. Um, and then as soon as your show is finished, they swing them someplace else. So yeah. it's not like there's, you know, a thousand people waiting around to help you with your little problem anyway. But like within a day or two days, we had a completely reanimated shot from them, um, oh, wow. you know, which is what you see in the movie. But anyway, from like, you know, from, from our side, I thought it was really smooth. You know, Robert Dalva was the editor. He was great. Joe was great to deal with. I remember Spielberg coming in once, twice, maybe, uh, into the cutting room to watch things. Um, Boom, 20% gross. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Totally right. uh, and but, and, and yeah. so did you, uh, okay, so you worked directly with um, Joe Johnston. What it was, is he as dry and as funny as he comes off on these comments? He was super funny and super nice. I mean, totally, <laughs> totally chill yes. guy, at least Amazing. within editorial. I, I don't know really what he was like. I mean, I know there was one explosion on set where a camera operator missed a shot. Um, Whoa. And that camera operator was no longer on the movie. Um, he, was, <laughs> he was he was he was replaced with a two by four yes <laughs> yeah and it was he like was well it, it was like when we were shooting up in the water tank on the um the upper universal lot and we were watching okay. dailies the next night because we were shooting like a week of nights there and we're watching dailies um uh, the following night you know following the shoot and i was sitting behind him in the trailer watching it and all of a sudden i just saw him stiffen up and after that, <laughs> after dailies, he like marched out, and I think they, you know, told the operator he was out. Ooh, damn, Ooh. that but, fast. You know, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, there's a lot of money at stake, and you know, it's not oh, like yeah. it's not like you go back. You know, ah, oh, God, you know, we screwed that up. Let's go back and fix that. It's like no. And so, yeah. um, but within editorial, he was super chill. Just you know, let's do the movie, and you know, he uh, unlike many directors, he was great. It's like. You know, he made a decision. He stuck by the decision, um, you know, and didn't waffle. He, he was awesome as far as I was concerned. Yeah, I, I kind of from the interviews that um, that I've listened to and read, I, I find he he seems just very like, yeah, just level headed and just like uh, just a workman. Like he just like I was hired to do a job and I'm going to get it done. Um, and uh, so I, I 
it kind of hurts me a little bit that the movie isn't that great because I do think that like Jumanji is really good. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids yeah, is he's really great. A talented director. Captain America is great. Yeah. Um, it just kind of sucks that this this happened to him for someone that wanted so much to do this movie. Like he wanted to do a Jurassic Park. It sucks yeah. that it didn't quite get there. Like it just it kind of stumbled before the finish line. You know, it's sort of like on a lot of sequels. You know, the first one people are really excited about. And it's like, yeah, let's have more of that. And by the time you hit the third one, people are like, oh, man, the first one was so good. The second one was, you know, marginal or it was like really amazing. And you get to the third one, people are like, ah, oh, Jesus, what are we doing here? You know? <laughs> and, yeah. and, you know, and I don't think that's even specific to this movie. I think I think it's just a lot of them. And then by the time you yeah. get to the fourth and fifth ones again, people are excited. You know, I, I'm Oh my god! I, 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 as far as I'm concerned, enough sequels. You know, do one movie, move on. That's just you know the cash cow yeah. for the studios. Yes. Yeah, Terminator Three was awful. <laughs> You're still harboring on that one. Oh yeah, I'll never, I'll <laughs> never not be harboring. <laughs> well, I think that's kind of interesting what you were saying there. Um, we were talked about how this movie was very simple. Like it, it's very just straightforward. It's just let's just get in, get out, that kind of thing. And uh, I do have this question written down. Is the film better or worse for not having like any big ideas? So like the first mm. one really kind of goes into like the the, the ethical ethics. dilemmas yeah. of bringing back dinosaurs and what that means, and they have all these really like one of my favorite scenes in Jurassic Park is the like their lunch where they're sitting there going, "You you wielded genetics like a kid with a, his his dad's handgun, handgun right?" Yeah. And like that, and then and then the second one is kind of more about like the greedy corporations, kind of like. The, their their need right. to make this park and and uh and do whatever it costs no matter who dies right. they're like recouping costs that they lost yeah by exactly making yeah we'll bring the uh, dinosaurs to the mainland yeah so do you think three works without not having any of those uh well here here's the thing about me i work on movies i don't really watch them so <laughs> you know i'm like i'm like the guy that works in the industry but doesn't really like movies particularly so i, I, I understand completely i'm not the person to watch this i mean i mean like you know i go home and i watch you know 90 day fiance and married at first sight and you know I'm, you know below deck i love this kind of crap you know but movies i i have the hardest time watching movies so i haven't seen any of the other jurassics you know, I, I don't have a I don't have a reference point. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, I, I I get what you mean. Like, um, so Jenny Ray used to uh, work in and film, and and she I, she would get home and be like, "This is." I'm like, I, I don't want to watch movies. I just I did that all day. Yeah. yeah, I was an editor as well for many many years. Um, yeah, it's the last but, thing I, mean, I want to do. Honestly, <laughs> it's kind of, I, I, I think it's kind of like on an average year, I might see three movies. Wow. Yeah, it, it it definitely, I think, like burns you out to movies when you work on them all the time. But I will say, though, your experience of like being in the editing paper, like, yeah, the edit was like super chill and and totally fine and great. And that was always my experience, too, is that like even no matter how crazy the production was, like editing was usually like fairly smooth because there's not a whole lot that can go wrong in, in an editing bay which is why i went into editing because it was much more uh chill <laughs> yeah. than being on set yeah who wants to be on a set i mean you know the days are long <laughs> enough but it's like, I, I like waking up at 5 yeah. 30 in the morning right, that's, and get that's there at 7 a.m call time yeah no I mean, thanks there's no way in hell i would ever be on set that early and you know i'm like dude i want to be at home with my family you know i want to yep. eat at my favorite places i do not want to live in a hotel with that said you know it uh you know when somebody calls up and says hey want to go to london for a couple months or you want to go to italy for a couple months you go oh that sounds kind of fun yeah, let's do that i have two questions for you one uh what was the hardest part of jurassic park three for you uh, so when I started, I was hired as the first assistant editor. Uh, we had um, another assistant editor. I, I dealt with the digital side of the cutting room at that point. We were still tracking um, physical film as well as digital. And uh, mm -hmm. so there was another assistant editor who was tracking uh, film and then a uh, second assistant or an apprentice on that side. So uh, when I was hired as the first assistant, I was like, great, no problem. I can do this. And then they're like, OK, and you have to deal with all these visual effects, too. That was a little bit of a surprise. And so 
I was doing two jobs for the price of one and the hours of one. That was a little stressful. Mm. Um, oh, you were you were the guy that got paid two thousand dollars. Got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. Was the... <laughs> I want to I want to say twenty seven hundred. Yeah, and uh, uh, and then it got just got to a certain point where I'm like, I can't do this anymore. Bring in uh, some help, and uh, and then we brought on another visual effects editor to carry the movie the rest of the way. Uh, cool. Logistically, that was it. But I mean, honestly, it was great people, super smooth process, and all that, and. You know, it's like it's it's a machine, frankly. Most of these movies, you have the design. Right now, I'm on a uh, uh, a horror movie, uh, The Boogeyman, and so it's Bad. like here's the design of the character. You know, and then you're like, all right, well, how do we slide this into as many shots as we want for the budget and the time that we have? You know, yeah, and that's right. that's kind of the dance. You know, we've got you know X number of millions of dollars and X number of weeks and and X number of um, uh, man hours at our visual effects facilities. How do, yeah, you, ma- how exactly. do you maximize that? And everything is a trade-off. I don't remember there being any stress about Jurassic in that respect. I think it was, here's what we're doing, and boom, we just went and got it. Like say, there wasn't really any extra there to, you know, do <laughs> and then throw in the garbage. There was a crap. total of four minutes, minutes to yeah, cut out. I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah. So... You know, the movie well, is what it is. It's not like when you start with a two and a half hour movie and you end up with a 90, you know, six minute movie. Right. You know, and you go, oh man, that shot was so good. You remember the score that was there? You know, all the stuff that you loved about the stuff that you left on the floor. There was none of that in there at all. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe one extra minute of the Nokia ringtone. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what would you say um, in keeping on our theme was the biggest biggest shit show that you had to deal with on that movie on any movie or anything that you've worked on God, if, you, if you can talk yeah, about it if, <laughs> yeah if you're allowed to <laughs> your nda Jesus. Um, <laughs> show. I, I won't go into specifics listen there if you go through my imdb there's some really bad movies on there <laughs> you know but you know, you kind of like. Hey, we all gotta have a job. That's it, dude. It's like if you pay me what you, what I want, you know, the check cash is I'm good for you. So, <laughs> um, you know, I will show up. I, you know, there's. I, I honestly, some of them. You know what? Okay, I'll, I'll tell you what. My favorite, Zombie Land. Okay. Absolutely kicked ass. Great people. Great product. You know, the whole process fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Um, and a, a really, really uh, a clever, cleverly edited film as well. Yeah, totally. Um, and, uh, you know, and then there's the ones where you're like, you're working with somebody, for instance, a picture editor who's in the middle of a divorce, you know, it's, <laughs> it's those, those are the kinds of projects where, where you just want to jump off the building. It's just, it's horrible <laughs> because, because again, for me, it's like, because I'm not, you know, like a movie freak, you know, I don't live yeah. for the content I'm. I'm a process person. Like I get you from here to there. And yeah, so, yeah. so the content doesn't really matter to me so much. I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to facilitate your creativity or alleged creativity. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I will, I will actually call out one, which, which we, we came on to, we were the third team of people in post-production on this movie. Uh, Ian Flux. Oh, okay. Was, okay. Yes. Was like we came on and we're like, okay, you guys have to come in. You've got to redo everything. Blah blah blah. Uh, Salvage this. It was yeah, and, and we actually kind of did, uh, and complete. There wasn't even a finish to the movie. There was like basically like no third act to the movie. Um, yeah. We went out, created that. The entire city um, was created in a couple of months. It was beautiful work. The story was put in, and then. The director, the director was pushed aside during this process, yeah. and so we were mm. able to have the freedom to, you know, put together a movie. And then the director was brought back in, and that's when it all went back to where it was. And wow. the, the final product speaks to it. So you think? So you would say that the the final product of Aeon, uh, Aeon Flux is is definitely the vision that the director had. That is accurate. Okay, that's very interesting. interesting. Oh man, well, Scott, we could talk to you all day. You should hit us up on our <laughs> our email. Yeah, no, we like really would love to do a full episode with you. That would be awesome. 
so you should reach out um where it was a shit show at gmail yeah <laughs> thank thank you so much for yeah, uh amazing. joining us thank you yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely we'll see if i have a job on monday <laughs> <laughs> Um, you can always you can always replace Clint on this podcast. Yeah. So don't worry yeah. about it. You've been threatening that for so long now. <laughs> that is. The... Well, thank you so much, sir. That uh, it's great, great talking to you. Yeah, you thank too. you. <laughs> you guys have fun. All right, so we got to read some. Was it worth it? Yeah. So I was just going to go to um, is Lost World Jurassic Park um, underrated? Six hundred. Oh wait, let me. So wait, refresh you're looking it. at this on our YouTube community. I'm on a channel. YouTube yeah. community channel, and seven hundred seventeen votes. Forty four percent is say it's underrated, and fifty six percent say no. So I am in the minority. <laughs> you're in the minority. Uh, um. Okay, we have three hundred votes for. After everything the cast and crew went through, was Jurassic Park three worth it? Yes, no, and I have mixed feelings about it. <laughs> yes, it was worth it, 18%. Okay. okay. No was 58%, and I have mixed feelings <laughs> was 24%. All right. <laughs> wow. So majority, 58%, not worth it. Yeah. Um. Questions from the audience. Um, did you, uh, Ryan, did you pull some stuff for us to? Yes. If you go back to our chat, the first okay. like, five or six links, if you scroll up, there's a couple of audience questions. Okay. All or, or right. Just uh, Jurassic World. What do we think about Jurassic World? Um, I actually, uh, Jurassic World will be an episode. Um, I don't know if it will be a video or a podcast, but we will. Um, I do want to dive into that because uh, it was just put into development hell. And there was just so many random stuff that they threw into that, like including there was a script that had dinosaurs with machine guns on their back and like Fuck the, mil yeah. <laughs> the military yeah, <laughs> like using them. And stuff. Like there's a bunch of stuff and it took a long time to get that movie made. I personally hate them, but that's me. I I stopped after Jurassic World. I never saw Fallen Kingdom, nor have I seen Dominion. Yeah, as I don't far think as, like, I've seen those either, actually. Well, I went into Jurassic World like already with this mindset. It's like, it's not Jurassic Park. And right. nothing is ever going to be Jurassic Park. Like, you know, with my love for it, my nostalgia for it. So I walked into that movie already knowing like that it's not going to be that. Yeah. And I think because I did that, I liked it a lot more than I, th than I should have. Yeah. Mm. Um, I, I think like... Everyone, everyone gives it like crap because like, oh, Indominus Rex wasn't an actual dinosaur, and I'm like, okay, yeah, sure, fine, but dinosaurs, dinosaurs are coming back, are <laughs> not coming back in real life. Like, so yeah. they can take all sorts of creative liberty that they want and make yeah. some really cool dinosaur hybrid. And I thought I did think that that was fun. Yeah, I think I think it, well, for watching it the first time, I thought I was okay with it. But when you start pulling the threads on it, I was just like, this movie is really, 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 really dumb. <laughs> and then Fallen Kingdom, Fallen Kingdom, I remember watching that and going, holy shit, that was a great moment. Holy shit, that was terrible. Oh, that was cool. That was even dumber. Like, And it was just this roller coaster where I was like, that was a really cool moment. Oh, this was the dumbest thing I've seen in a long time. <laughs> like, right. And then it, it just falls apart. I mean, my opinion on the first Jurassic World pretty much extends to the fact that she was running around in high heels and didn't change her <laughs> shoes, which, which as, as listeners of this podcast know, is one of my biggest movie pet peeves. Which yeah, was no. solved in. Pull but... your hair up. Take your, take your high heels off women in films <laughs> women. come on no my, my wife had that same thing she's like why is she running around in she's her gonna heels snap her ankle yeah uh i love this comment i'm about to watch this movie <laughs> i've been so excited until now <laughs> hey you know Sorry. listen it's, it's, you okay. still go watch it it's you'll have a good time yeah make a make a drinking game out of it yeah the, yeah, the question that you ask like is it worth it to make this movie no is it worth the watch once sure yeah, like just to see. You got an hour and a half. Alan. Yeah, you got an hour it's, and a half. Yeah, you know see. what? You know, that's funny that you say that because we were sitting there going like, we don't really have that much time to watch stuff these days. But like, so we have a very finite amount of time and it was like this, the Stranger Things episodes are so stupid long mm -hmm. that it like made us go, let's just watch Jurassic Park instead because yeah. it was shorter. It is the length of a Stranger <laughs> Things. I, I had those exact same thoughts running through my mind as we yeah. were talking about runtime. I was like, but Stranger Things was longer. But that's yeah. A t but that's a TV show. <laughs> yeah. Like what? Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Do you think it's so bad that it's good? No. No. Yeah. That's I don't what think I so that, like that's what I was meaning earlier when it's like it's not bad enough to be like a fun bad. Like it's not bad enough to be like, "Oh boy, I'm about to watch a Canon Pictures film." Yeah, and something... you're like stoked about how bad it's going to be. It's just like a straight down the middle movie. Yeah, like I think like like I said there's some cool stuff in there, but like it's not like we we have a bad movie night and we watch terrible things and the other night we watched the first twilight like that shit is so <laughs> bad it is so fun to watch <laughs> like um so i don't and i don't think Jurassic Park hits that no. i think it's too competently made <laughs> right it's too comp- competently made to be bad and it's but it's not good enough to be good yeah mm-hmm. it's in that weird yeah, middle ground that's straight yeah. down the middle right yeah. Uh, where would you rank Jurassic Park three in uh, the six movies? So I, I haven't seen the last one. I mean, they um, just basically go in chronological order for me. Like, I think that's fair. Jurassic Park is one. Jurassic <laughs> Park two is second. It's just, it's just, con- it's just yeah. a constant downhill. For yeah. yeah. I um, mean, to be fair though, I have not seen the most recent two Jurassic Worlds. Yes. Yeah. So. See, I haven't either. And if I were to rank, I probably if you put so yeah, Jurassic Park and then Lost World Jurassic Park. But then if you put Jurassic Park 3 and uh, Jurassic World in front of me, I probably would watch Jurassic World first before I'd watch Jurassic Park 3. Yeah. Yeah. I can okay, I, can I can see, see that. that. Um, and there's, yeah, there, there's something to say about it. I, I, I'm going to put Fallen Kingdom uh, above 3 and The First World because I think that movie is just a fascinating shit show like like as in not in our version of a shit show but just like the the final product of that movie is so bonkers like mm-hmm. that is just the ideas that it has there are moments where you're like oh you're like want to cry for these dinosaurs that are dying on the island and then the next scene you're just like what the stupid nonsense was that <laughs> <laughs> so I, I will give it props for that and then I've uh, a lot of people saying that the Jurassic Park three was their uh, their favorite movie. I don't know how old you are, but I do think there is like kind of like a generational thing too. Yeah. If like that was the one you grew up with, it's kind of like people who are really uh, grew up with the prequels of Star Wars. Like they love those. Well, it's when like you watch how them. Mortal Kombat Annihilation is my favorite <laughs> Mortal Kombat movie because I watched it four times a week as a child. Yeah, not understanding. Yeah, how terrible it is. It's not terrible. It's amazing, but it's terrible. To, so I, I mean, get that. To each their own, um, and yeah. uh, I I really like you. You can you can absolutely love bad movies, and even if you don't consider it a bad movie, you absolutely I don't care. Like we, yeah, we don't we don't gatekeep here. Yeah, we're not gatekeepers. You, you love what you love. God bless. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty much all we have, guys. Um, yeah. I want to give a huge thank you to Reddit for having us. Thank you so much for allowing us to do this, uh, giving us this opportunity. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah, this has been a total blast. Yeah. Likewise, guys. It's been so great to have you on here. We've had over 500 people now for, what, two Woo! hours? Woo-hoo! So that's, that's quite a lot of people. Um, and I'm glad oh, that no. everyone got to experience um, how, how great you are together. Um, where can people find you again? Do you want to give another plug? If you click on our Reddit profile, there's links to all of our socials. You can find us on Instagram. It was a shit show. Twitter, it was a shit show. TikTok. I mean, the handle's consistent all across all the socials um, without the I, though. Yeah. And yeah, and then we have our own little subreddit here, um, r slash it was a shit show. It's, <laughs> it's we're a not baby really great subreddit. At Reddit yet. <laughs> it's a baby subreddit. So please, if you want to go in there and engage, please do join that subreddit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, definitely check out the YouTube channel. Um, the YouTube channel is where all the, I would say the best versions of everything that we do. <laughs> yeah, but we have a lot of episodes for you to check out. There's 48 so far. Yes. Go give them a listen. And thanks, everybody who stuck with us, all you 500 people who stuck with us for two hours. You're amazing. Yes, um, thank you. Love it. Yeah. And and yeah, thanks to our movies as well for having us and hosting this talk. You guys are awesome. Thank you, guys. And thank you, too, for joining me. Oh, thank you for having me. I mean, I live here. I didn't have a choice. So <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I, I left my three-year-old daughter alone at home. <laughs>